Hello, I'm John Furry with the Cube. I'm here in the Cube Studios in Palo Alto, California, for SiliconANGLE News. We're here breaking down the telco disruption with cloud. You got the edge. The telecom industry just came off Mobile World Congress, MWC 2023, and big players emerged with new plans to reimagine the industry. And that's just the wave of the business transformation that cloud computing, data, AI, machine learning is all transforming. And the telco industry is one that is being disrupted. I'm joined here by Dalfo Hernandez, Vice President of Global Telco Business Unit at Amazon Web Services, AWS. Adolfo, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, thanks for having me. Good to see you as well. You guys had a big presence at MWC. We were there at theCUBE um, and we had a lot of conversations coming in around how telco is now transforming to the edge, moving from their old, old guard kind of environment to the new guard. You, know, you got containers, you got Kubernetes, you got machine learning. The infrastructure and the operations are evolving. Not as quick as some say, but it is happening, unlike it was years ago, it was like a, like a glacier uh, speed of transformation, but a little bit much more acceleration going on this year. The big story was there's movement. They're transforming their business operations. You guys were a big part of many stories. You're simplifying, you're automating some solutions. What was the big takeaway for you guys this year around the acceleration and what's this transformation look like? Yeah, ex excellent point. Um, I think it's the speed. I think it's the speed and reality. So uh, a few years ago, whether it was three, five years ago, uh, we, we had a vision and we were talking about the vision of being able to accelerate the transformation of, of telcos by helping them move to the cloud, right? And engaging with our partner ecosystem and innovating on their behalf and really get that, that transformation going. But at the time it was a vision, right? We were talking about it. We were doing some, some uh, uh, modest first steps. And I think what you saw um, a couple of weeks ago is that it's happening, right? This, this, this from vision to reality is that no longer is if, maybe not even how, we are in between how and when. And, and there is a lot of interest. So there's a lot of engagement. Uh, people wanted to see, people wanted to sit down, discuss, people wanted to go and, and, and engage in typical problems that they have. And we love working with them. So, you know, walk backwards. <laughs> from those problems and 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 just just engage with our partners and give them the acceleration that they need to move to the cloud and transform this wonderful industry that is telecommunications. You know, I'm always joking about the glacier speed of telco, and you know, I know you can't say that, but I can. Um, but people know that I love the telco industry. I think it's always been one of those innovation areas. If you look at all the, the transit of internet from the internet days to how phone calls are being made on the mobile side. Now you've got 5G, the convergence of data. This is an opportunity up zone for more um, innovation and use cases. You're seeing IOT devices, industrial IOT specifically, are getting an extreme focus. A lot more of our lives are now being identified at the edge where telcos will be playing. The towers are getting smaller, getting more powerful, more distance, more bandwidth. This is a big part of why this is the confluence right now. What, what's Absolutely. the impact of the cloud native piece specifically? What is Amazon doing? What is AWS doing specifically right now in this particular moment? So, so the advantages of the cloud are huge for any industry, right? It gives you that elasticity, it gives you that agility, it gives you that ability to pay for what, what you use. In the context of telco, it also gives you an infrastructure that you don't have to build, an infrastructure that is already there. It gives you an ability of not having to build networks for peak requirements, but just, just use it and flex up or down with the associated cost reduction. It gives you the benefits of a much more improved uh, green efficiency uh, from, from where you're there. And then it also brings everything else that we have done on the IT side of the cloud. It brings you all the services, 200 services, that you can go and, and use. It gives you integration of cameras, IoT, computer vision, machine learning, um, data services. It gives you all of these services ready for you to consume within the telco uh, domain. And you don't have to go through those long cycles that you and I remember, right, of building the project and securing the budget and deploying the equipment, doing testing here. You can just innovate at a much faster clip. You can just boot up test, succeed, and scale up. And if it doesn't work, you shut it down and, and try something else. So you bring that together, everything I just talked about, together with all these partners that we have 
100,000 partners. It gives you the developer ecosystem, which, by the way, developers was a big theme as well, right? Everything that the GSMA is doing on, on, on Open Gateway. And then we bring out a marketplace already with 10,000 vendors on it that are ready to write in the cloud. So it's just the best of both worlds uh, coming together and delivering real value today. One of the things that was a theme was unlocking growth opportunities that came up a lot in terms of new business opportunities, extending you know, the margin of, of providers. What are some of those um, opportunities that you guys are an unlocking with 5G Edge and some of the enterprise transformations? We saw a lot of private networks, mm -hmm. 5G. What are some of those growth opportunities that you guys are driving with 5G Edge and enterprise transformation? Um, you know, uh, spot on. Um, the, one of the, our big announcements uh, was announcing a, a solution that we call integrated private wireless. And it wasn't a solution that we just sort of brought to market as such. It was something that we brought to market with leading telcos around the world, right? We, we co-announced it with Deutsche Telekom, with the KDDI in Japan, with Orange in France, with T-Mobile uh, in the US and with Telefonica. And it was about combining all the capabilities that private 4G and 5G technologies can provide to enterprises with the ease of deployment and the manageability and the access of doing it on the AWS platform. So it's a it's a bringing a offering that is easy for, for telecom um, companies to take to market. It's very easy to deploy on AWS. And if you're an enterprise user who spends the time uh, on the AWS ecosystem, here is a landing page where you can use, you can look for your needs for integrated private wireless, and you don't need to go and, and, and start a whole uh, separate design and do it all from scratch, because we've done that work to, to help the, um, the adoption of private wireless. So, so that was one of the big things we put out there. We demonstrated a number of other revenue generating opportunities, like a demo we had in Stan, that was super popular, uh, something we did with Telus Canada, Smart Home 2.0, on how you could integrate third party devices by any manufacturer, not only uh, Amazon devices, was all sorts of third parties, how you can integrate Alexa, how you can in in integrate Siri, how you can integrate everything and have a zero touch platform owned by the telco operator that can manage uh, the provisioning and the management of a smart home. That a few years ago would have just been science fiction. We were demonstrating that that today. Another example, right on the edge, Telia. Um, they're doing a fantastic piece of work with a, a logistic outsourcer in Finland called Transval Web. They, they, they have built a AI ML power solution where they can process a real time uh, video on warehouses and really track inventory moves and optimize inventory, all uh, managing the edge and managing yeah. cameras. So and, there's a type of yeah. tech solution that, that these guys wouldn't have been able to do a few years ago, and it just helps them build revenue. Yeah, and I noticed that was on your LinkedIn um, uh, feed that the COO of Tele Corporation I was talking about the deal you guys announced recently news. That's an example yeah. they use the, the virtual private 5G um, component. Why, are, why is the virtual private network so popular? Is that because that's what the enterprises like? They want that security? Is that a security issue? Or is that a limitation or a new feature of the new environment? It's, I, listen, Wi-Fi has a lot of advantages, right? And some wireline solutions have a lot of advantages. But sometimes you need something that is more flexible and less costly to deploy than, than wireline. You've got now the ability to have high connectivity, a lot of more devices, sensors everywhere. And, and you don't have the, the quality of service. You might not have the reach. You might not have the security on Wi-Fi. So this private wireless solution brings the best of both worlds, brings the security, the quality of service, the the, the security that it's available in 4G and 5G, but you can deploy it in the context of your campus, your logistics center, your airport, um, your hospital. And it's a, it's a really good use case of 5G, not only uh, being used for consumers, but also used to transform other industries and, and help us get that digital transformation accelerated. Adolfo, what are you investing in right now for your team? What are you looking at? What's the focus? What's the priorities? So it's it's a lot to be done, right? <laughs> we talked about sustainability earlier and sustainability 
uh, and decarbonization is a big topic for Amazon, as you know, for AWS and for us in, in, in AWS Telco as well. We sincerely believe that running a lot of these old uh, workloads and certainly the new workloads on a more modern, more efficient, energy efficient infrastructure is going to save the planet. We had uh, um, a demonstration by uh, Entity Docomo demonstrating how they can get a 72% uh, energy efficiency by running on Graviton infrastructure. One big area, and it's a lot of stuff that we can do there. The other announcement that we made, uh, and it got quite a lot of headlines uh, um, during, during last week, is about the um, is the telco network builder. It's about orchestration of network capabilities at the telco standard level, and then have a translation internally that sort of maps that that network mapping that net, network engineers create and map that automatically into instances, pops and, and things like that. So we're just removing a lot of the complexity. That's that's another area. You see in the area of private wireless, yeah. you see in the work that we're doing with SageMaker to make it more relevant to some of the use cases that, that uh, telcos are accelerating. So, you know, we've been announcing outpost innovations, snow, some of our uh, mobile disconnectable ruggerized devices for some uh, complex use cases. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to bring the best of everything that we do at AWS and we make it relevant and value generating in the context of telecoms IT and telecom networks. And you're partnering with them to do all this. This is the focus. It's so much, not so much to try to force the disruption. You guys are working hand in hand with the customers. We're working hand in hand with customers. Uh, everything that we've announced is always uh, partnering with someone, but we're also partnering with with that ecosystem of, of partners that are critical in the telecommunication space, either in the IT domain, but growingly in the in the, in the network domain. See the announcement we made with uh, Nokia on, on Cloud RAN. How do we get the best of both worlds uh, from uh, Nokia's experience and platforms in the RAN and bring it to the cloud? We also did the demo uh, uh, with Juniper on, on energy optimization, but we're also partnering with uh, Tech Mahindra, with uh, Capgemini, with Accenture, with a number of other slalom uh, critical um, SIs that are also adding a lot of value to those transformations. So for us in AWS Telecom, it's about partnering with the ecosystem and accelerating this. Yeah, I'm interested in that Juniper deal. Maybe we have some, I mean, another interview to get with those guys. Very interesting uh, proposition. Um, I want to sequence now to um, your themes at Mobile World Conference. I think these are going to be consistent with what we're going to be talking about over the next year, leading up to next year's CUBE at, at, Re uh, at reInvent and also at Mobile World Congress. You guys had a couple key themes, networks, networks cloudified, operations simplified, growth unlocked, and uh, you know, kind of simplifying the, reimagining the customer experience. So I have a couple of questions if you don't mind. Uh, can sure. you explain how Amazon's orchestrating the software defined network to provide greater scalability and security? Cause that's a big part. You kind of mentioned some of the automation piece, but what specifically um, how you are orchestrating the SDN for scalability and security? So um, security is, is uh, job one, right? Uh, AWS. Everything that we do when we build um, uh, our cloud and we deploy our infrastructure and our services and our processes, everything is done with security in mind. And so is scalability, right? So you see, you go and look at our cloud continuum, right? Going from regions to be able to then go to local zones in the metros and be able to go to outpost or or wavelength in particular uh, operators of being out into snow devices. All of that is a cloud continuum where you have a common set of services, common set of APIs and tools that people can use. And everything is being built with security and scalability in mind. Then when we go and look at particular workloads, we have the ability to go and target what part of the uh, network continuum is best suited for what particular workload. You wouldn't deploy a BSS in the same uh, part of the architecture that you would deploy a RAN because they have very different uh, requirements in terms of processing, network throughput and others. So, so we are optimizing by workload 
but we're keeping the basics common, security, scalability, flexibility, and commonality of, of our tools and interfaces for developers. Yeah, and I, and I think that's why that's the number one theme I noticed on the rank, networks, cloudified. Um, it's huge because networking is a big part of this industry, obviously, but also you have old school networking and kind of new school networking. The cloud native networking obviously is the new school. How are you guys approaching that integration of the cloud native networking technologies with the existing on-premises infrastructure related um, hybrid cloud or old school networking? Because I mean, right now there's more virtualization migration to say containers and Kubernetes than I've ever seen before, but still, it's still sm smaller numbers than the legacy on virtualization. On the networking side, what's the equivalent um, on-premise migration integration dynamic? Can you share your thoughts on how you're approaching that integration of the cloud native networking with existing on-premises? So, so I think the best way to 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 go after this problem challenge, right, is acknowledging that we're starting in two different positions, right? From one side, as you said, we're coming from sort of on-premise um, bare metal type networking capabilities. On the cloud, it's it's networking is virtualized. So, so that's that was the starting point. That's that's where the two industries were, and we're doing a lot of work with our partners, uh, with the likes of Nokia as an example, to go and figure out for every particular workload in this particular case, the RAN, what is the best possible solution? And there we came up with a joint engineer solution that respects the principles of, of being cloud native in everything that we do at AWS, but also addresses some of the design and architecture discussions that, that uh, considerations that the likes of Nokia bring it. Just being an example, as many others, but the, the key word on how we solve the air is, is really rolling up our sleeves and getting our engineering teams talking to each other, <laughs> trying to figure out what is the best solution for the customer and work backwards from the customer so that we end up having the right solution for the customer. Yeah, and I think that's a hot area. We're going to continue to explore that. We're seeing a lot of traction on cloud native networking and kind of creating this cloud operational model, which is the next pillar of your themes, the operation simplified. Okay, this is now the op side. Networking, a lot of work to continue to be doing there. I know you guys got good networking capabilities there. And, and bridging that, it's going to be a challenge, but we can, we can talk about that another time. On the op side, this is really where the simplification of ops with the customers comes in. Can you talk about how you guys are addressing the challenge that customers have in managing the increasingly complex and distributed systems in a way that's both scalable and easy to use on the customer side? Because as they get more scale and automation, and it gets more distributed with the edge, the complexity is increasing, but also the scale and ease of uses. And that opens up a lot of things like configuration errors, potentially security. So this is the challenge. Can you share how you guys are addressing this? Yeah, I, I uh, John, let me sort of push back a bit. I, I think the challenge is not that particular configuration error. The challenge is that there is a lot of capital and talent deployed against these operations. And in many cases, they are legacy, uh, overly complex, uh, and they haven't been updated for a while. And they're actually holding the businesses back, right? There's still um, customers out there. Do you not have the catalog solutions that they need for uh, efficient go-to-market uh, as a telco? There are telcos out there who still have very legacy, decades old BSS systems that need help with, right? And some of the work that we're doing with the likes of uh, Amdocs, uh, and Optima, and a number of other partners, Ericsson BSS, goes towards modernizing that those old infrastructures and moving them to the cloud so that they can get that agility. You also have some pretty large ERP systems that are maybe dated, maybe on old expensive infrastructure that need to be migrated to the cloud. You might have particularly telcos tens of thousands of, of Windows machines that are running out there, that are, might, are running on, on you know, out, out of date, out of maintenance or very expensive maintenance hardware that you could very quickly move to run uh, on the cloud and, and, and virtualize. And then at the macro level, they, they sit on a very uh, rich infrastructure of data centers. That some of them, they might want to keep. Yeah. Uh, but some of them, they just want to exit because they're sitting on, on costs and, and, and energy costs that, that you don't have. And for some of them, 
uh, John, the, the teams that build those operational centers and systems, um, you know, are of a certain age, and some of them are going to be uh, working through the through the workforce. So, so you want to get the skills, the cloud skills, uh, to be more pervasive inside the telco operations departments. So, as and when these workloads are moved for cost simplifications, for operational simplifications, for business agility reasons to the cloud. There is going to be a team there uh, that is cloud native. They're born in the cloud, trained in the cloud. And that's another area that we work with our customers and partners with. So your premise is that obviously the operations is outdated and antiquated. So they're not even simplified yet. So there's an error, there's one use case of the challenge of modernizing the existing old school ops, which is systems and process workflows. Get that modernized and shift to the cloud then simplify with with cloud native. There is no, and, you yeah. know, we all we, yeah. we have our our migration tools and assessments and methodologies. Some things you can lift and shift. Some things you have to simplify before you move them. So there isn't a universal uh, solution. Uh, some things, some of these air solutions in OSS, BSS in particular, they're rather bespoke. Yeah. So it's not like the, the new one uh, necessarily exists on the cloud. So, so, so the migration actually comes with some uh, uh, work that needs to be done. And and again, I think they're working with someone like AWS, who has co-development uh, relationships with the likes of uh, Amdocs, yeah. uh, does make these this moves a lot easier. They're never painless, but they're just easier. Yeah, and I think that's really why I've always called it the glacier speed movement, because I think their ops is, has hamstrung them a lot. I think you're right on on that. I think that's real the, the bottleneck spin. But the beautiful thing about the pandemic that we saw during the pandemic was people were agile when they changed their ops. We saw Amazon Connect, for instance, do well with, the, with during the pandemic. So I think a lot of people have opened their eyes to the fact that they could reboot ops quickly that will change the customer experience and unlock the growth. So for the customers uh, that have done that, really if they have, yeah. the ones that have done that, okay, you believe that to be true, I'm sure you, agree, you would agree with I, that. I, I, I do, I do, and, and Connect, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very good example Con of that. Connect highlights that you don't have to get stuck in hugging your old stuff. You can really kind of move that out, bring in the new quickly. And, and if, you, if there's pain there, you can, you can solve it. But this unlocks the experience of the customer, okay, and unlocks growth. So can you talk about that piece of it for the folks that have been successful with Amazon? How have they leveraged the AI and machine learning? Um, what tools are they using um, to help them? Um, you see the rise of the chat bots are here. You're seeing that kind of vibe going on. So clearly the direction in the, the new model will be leveraging technology, driving operational efficiency for customer value. Can you share anything, uh, insights there? Yeah, so so if, if you think about it uh, fr from a, first of all, from a simplification and a cost reduction perspective, we will be moving in Connect from legacy uh, telephony systems used by, by by college and serving customers that only have the information that, that they had to fully on the cloud uh, systems that you can deploy as a super fast clip, you can get hundreds, thousands of agents enabled very quickly in a virtualized environment. In an environment where all the data is, is, is there for you to use. And then within that data, you can start using some of the AWS, AIML services that would allow you to do things like on the fly, uh, real time transcribing. Uh, you can do sentiment analysis. You can start predicting uh, what the subject or the context of the next call is going to be. Uh, you can, you know, get that generating through the, some of the tools what our next best offer uh, could be. And then you might even, you know, you, you might not always do it just sort of for efficiency. Sometimes you might have an outage. Sometimes something might go down and you need to have something like Connect. You can very quickly just spin out um, the systems, which that's why they were so popular during the pandemic, to give you that flexibility. There is a pick, there is a campaign, there is an outreach. And then you're doing all of this by capturing all your data, by being able to understand all the calls, by being able to understand what's happening, by being able to predict and influence behavior. And that's that's just, just a paradigm because in the old days, you know, these projects used to take uh, Years. tens of millions of dollars, or hundreds of millions of dollars in, in CapEx. It would take 
I, you know, a long, long time to deploy. And then they were quite ecstatic once they were done. They, this is flexible from day one yeah. and integrated with AI ML services from day one. So it's fan fantastic. You know, I wrote an article when I interviewed Adam Selesky for the reInvent um, exclusive. One of the things we talked about was this new dynamic of the, the benefits of the, I call it the next gen Amazon. He didn't really like that, but, but that's what I called it. As you guys go out 13 years later, uh, 15 years later, 17 years, it's been around it's in the cloud. You CapEx investments throwing off more value. As you point out, there's now customers sitting on top of Amazon building ecosystems and that look like their own cloud, but they're really being powered by AWS. This is creating new growth opportunities. Uh, and that was one of the themes that you guys had out there at MWC. Can you share the kind of like, what's going to be that explosive edge growth that you're unlocking. I call it the edge generically because you got 5G edge, you know, edge technically, you know, you know, technically edge, but then the enterprise transformation that you guys call it. But it's basically the edge, telco and the edge and networking. This is going to be a new business model opportunity for companies. What do you see as unlocking growth for people who are working with AWS? What kind of value propositions? Obviously you've seen the AI wave coming. We're going to see that part of the edge, IOT devices, industrial IOT. What are the big growth drivers you see out there? I, I, I think this is fundamental to transform other industries. Um, so if you look at the edge, if you can look at what edge type solutions, a private mech deployed inside a manufacturing plant can do, right? Enabling a number of case, uh, use cases that, that were in there before you can have now real time uh, processing, well, you, you can capture all possible sensors, cameras, you can process them uh, on, on premises and you can only send back what you really need. So now you go from like very rigid manufacturing to e-manufacturing. If you think about what you can do now in healthcare hospitals, uh, what you can do in sort of airports, the user experience that you can give to fans in stadiums and arenas and different cameras, different projections. These this, this industries are being fundamentally transformed by injecting 5G into their industries on top of the edge. And there is where why we are so invested in our cloud continuum going from the region all the way out to the edge. Because we believe that to really transform these industries, you're going to need ISVs, solution developers, who are going to be writing these solutions and, and writing these, these ideas on, on top of those edge platforms. And we want them to be writing them with our telco partners, and we want them to be writing it on the, on the AWS uh, platform. Yeah. So, you know, you think of entertainment, <laughs> transportation, think about uh, manufacturing, you, you can think of- uh, Automotive. School, automotive, so, so all of that, we just at the beginning of those industries being transformed and telecommunications and 5G edge is going to be the catalyst. Yeah, and I would just, I would also highlight not to, uh, first of all, I agree with everything you said, I also highlight that role of data is becoming very clear at the edge. Now that you have intelligent, secure connectivity with 5G and Wi-Fi, you're going to have that now new dynamic of the business value of data at the edge with high compute power, with AI, at the point of processing. So that's uh, point of processing. It's going to be a really big opportunity. Well, one more comment before we go. I know we're, we're Can I say, up. John, just real quick, if I may, because I think mean, data, in data, we're going to see the two dynamics, really important. The one you described, absolutely data that is acquired and processed on the edge. But we also see more and more and more the emergence in telecom of the need to create telco data lakes internally. How do you connect without migrating everything that is impossible to migrate? But how do you create a single uh, pane of glass view of all the data that you have inside yep. uh, a telecom operator, whether a creator of content in the telecom uh, operator and the consumer of content have access yeah. to, to each other much faster? So data is absolutely at the core and we're seeing volumes of data that is now uh, being processed, stored, and and analyzed, um, just going through the roof. Yeah, and also to compliance where it's stored, it's at location, if it's in a country, you got a region, you got a local zone. Um, it's going to be, it's, everything is yep. going to be uh, changing. It's going to be pretty exciting, a renaissance at the edge for sure, but also challenges and opportunities. So, uh, you know, that brings us up on our time here, but I want to say thank you for coming on and doing a little recap for our news team here. 
Um, you guys are really kind of staying ahead, scaling up with security, orchestrating the network. You know, the future of business you know, is going to happen at the edge and you guys are doing a good job and, and we're going to keep following this. Again, next year we'll be at uh, Mobile World Congress again with theCUBE. Uh, Aldolfo, great to have you on again. CUBE alumni, Aldo Hernandez, her vice president, Global Telco Business Unit. I'll give you the final word. What should we expect next year at MWC? I think we're going to see a, a lot more of two things more around sustainability, and we're going to be seeing a lot more about telcos becoming tech co's in how they go to market. All right, we'll, we'll be there. We're going to be covering it end to end all year. You'll see a lot more SiliconANGLE news coverage. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.